hello everyone in this video we'll talk about generated clocks so generated clocks is a topic that has been very regularly asked in the VLSI interviews so we thought of bringing up this topic over here so what we'll do is we'll start with a basic divide by two circuit we'll try to build the circuit we'll try to build the waveform and then try to create the generated clock definitions out of that particular circuit okay so without wasting any time let's begin so we have this particular flip-flop with the D pin it has got the Q pin and the Q bar pin and for example let's say there was a port or a source of clock which was present over here and that's called the master clock okay so the master clock is present at this at this point somewhere that particular master clock is being feeding this particular flop at this clock pin so now what the, the proper divide by two circuit is getting formed something like this you have the Q pin Q port which is output of this particular flop going to some circuitry and then you take this Q bar and tie it to a D pin okay so this is your divide by two circuit that you will usually see in 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 any of the in any of the VLSS circuits this is a very common divide by two circuit so let's see how does this function as a divide by two first of all so let's say this is the output of this particular thing is a generated clock it we have kept a short form short form over here which is called as gen underscore clock so now if you look into the waveforms we'll try to understand this circuit in terms of waveforms and then we will try to create the generated clock at this point okay so the waveform let's say this was the master clock a master clock has got a 50 percent duty cycle it it is it is uh, at the leading edge for 50 percent and at the trailing edge for 50 percent of the clock and this is your clock period so clock period is from this point to this point okay and now let's bring up the other other nodes so for example q q which is the this is the point where you have defined the gen clock initially let's assume some initial condition and in this case we are assuming the initial value of of q is zero that is initial gen clock value is zero okay so if q is zero your q bar is one if your q bar is one your q bar is being fed to the d pin so your d pin is one so these are the initial conditions we have to uh, we have to understand or and other uh, and in the different way you can take the q as one and hence derive the similar kind of waveforms with respect to whatever initial conditions you want to put you can always do that but for the sake of simplicity we have taken this as initial conditions so zero it the q is zero q bar is one and q bar is being fed to d so d is also one so now during the first sorry during the first clock edge of the master so this is a this is a rising edge flip-flop so during the first clock edge of this particular master clock your d will be pushed to q your d the, the data that is, that is present at the d that will get pushed to q okay and q bar is a reverse of q so the waveform will be something like this so d the d is logic 1 q switches from logic 0 to logic 1 which is nothing but the d so d is pushed to q okay q bar will be exactly opposite to q so it will switch to 0 it will switch from 1 to 0 and since q bar is being fed to d your d is switch to switching to 0 from logic 1 to logic 0 okay now during the next clock cycle when the next clock cycle of the master arrives over here at this point of time your d your d which is at logic 0 will now get pushed to q so q which is at logic 1 will now go from logic 1 to logic 0 something like this because the d is d is 0 so d gets pushed to q and 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 the output is logic 1 to logic 0 okay so since q bar is a reverse of q so it will it will rise from logic 0 to logic 1 something like this and similarly since q bar is being fed to d d will rise from logic 1 to logic 0 sorry logic 0 to logic 1 so moving on if we, if we try to implement the circuit even more further so it, the waveform will look something like this so your d which is now logic 1 in the next clock cycle will be pushed to q so now your d which was logic 1 is pushed to q so q moves from logic 0 to logic 1 okay q bar inverse of q will go from logic 1 to logic 0 something like this and since q bar is being fed to d your q d is also switches from logic 1 to logic 0 and similar for the next clock cycle also so this even you can derive your q moves from logic 1 to logic 0 because your d is 0 d is getting pushed to q okay and similarly q bar and d switch respectively so this is the waveform now for a static timing analysis tool this waveform this waveform that you give that you get at the gen clock let's put this waveform over here so this waveform that you get at this particular point of time okay the further circuits which will be connected to this particular gen clock which are this particular flops has to be characterized with this waveform and not this waveform so this is the waveform which is being fed from external world so we create this clock 
we create this as a master clock and the output of this particular clock which is generated clock we create it separately because this is a static timing analysis tool it's not a dynamic timing analysis so basically whatever waveform you you achieve at this point of time that has to be that has to be defined somewhere so that the further analysis will be done based on this waveform had it been a dynamic circuit in this case the this particular waveform would, would have been automatically derived at this point but since it's a static timing analysis it's a static timing analysis tool so this particular gen, gen clock what we get at the output after after understanding this particular circuitry behavior based on these graphs you need to get this graph at the output of gen clock and the further circuit has to be has to be analyzed with respect to this this waveform so we have to construct this waveform or you have to code this waveform in such a fashion in there are there are some syntax and semantics to it so it, the, you have to you have to code this particular waveform in a syntactical manner so that the following circuits will understand this particular waveform so how do we do this so we have got a special a special tool it's called as a generated clock generated clock basically if we have got a special setting that is called as generated clock we can create a generated clock at this point of time which is derived from this particular master clock because on on a functionality base the generated clock is derived from the master clock so we can write we can code this particular functionality in 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 this format so for example generated clock has got certain properties it has got the name it has got the source pin source name so name is basically the name that we try to give to this particular new clock that is getting derived at the output and we call it as let's say we call it as gen clock okay the source name or the uh, pin and the port name so it says that what is the source of this particular generated clock in this case the source of source of this particular generated clock is nothing but the master clock so we put the master clock table y value over here okay now what else can we see we see that this is this output waveform is a divided by two of the master clock waveform so for example if this this was the clock period of the master clock let's say this was one nanosecond and one nanosecond is equivalent to one gigahertz so now this particular waveform is like two nanoseconds so two nanoseconds is 500 megahertz so th this clock is getting divided by two so that's why if you see there is one more option that you see over here it's divided by two we put a value over here it's called divided by two okay and duty cycle we don't put a duty cycle over here because this is being derived from the master clock itself and since it's a divide by two there is not much control over the duty cycle so duty cycle is valid only for a multiply by circuit so we'll be looking into the duty cycle thing much in in in, in some other videos basically the next next videos or the upcoming videos will be looking into duty cycle also okay and and rest all the, the other options that you see so those are not valid for this kind of waveform so for example you have a multiply by option but this waveform is is not a multiplied waveform it's a divided by waveform so you keep it as you, you keep it as blank or you put a dash over here and this again this waveform is not an inverted waveform it's a straight waveform so again you put a dash over here and there are two more options which is edge and shifted edge so you i'll be i'll be talking about edge and shifted edge kind of waveforms in some in in the later videos so for this particular waveform for this particular video let's keep it as dash okay so this basically represent your generated clock so whenever we are asked about generated clock or derive deriving a constraint for generated clock this uh, this is the table that you need to fill once you fill up this table the 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 the, the constraint for, for the generated clock will automatically get derived okay so this is the basic table uh, a basic table for it so what we'll do is since this was a very simple circuit it was a ba very basic divided by two circuit we'll look into more complex circuit and more complex waveform and try to obtain the generated clock properties and try to fill up this particular table so let's try to look into a more complex waveform in the next video thank you